Okay, so today we are opening the big topic of uh, prototyping. Uh, big uh, or huge, not because it's uh, difficult or um, very complex, but rather than uh, because it solves a lot of problems. Uh, it's a key, let's say, task, uh, a key uh, tool also for for helping us uh, in delivering the right uh, project. Okay. So uh, just remember where we are. Uh, we just uh, analyzed uh, the, the needs of the users. So we uh, identified the problem. We discussed, uh, observed, uh, interviewed the users to understand better what they think, how they think, what are their issues, and so on. And so we uh, even maybe formalized some tasks that we want to support. So right now, we should be ready to implement something, right? Because we have clear ideas about what our users' needs and how it could be a good way to organize those activities, so to sequence those activities into meaningful tasks for the users so that they can reach their goals, okay? If we only were perfect, it would be a nice moment to start implementation, start the detailed specification and so on, okay? But chances are that uh, uh, at this level, we still have a, let's say, a general idea, but not very precise idea of how to implement some functionalities or how to, pre uh, to, to present some information to the user so that they can understand it and so on. So we think we understand users, but not at the level of detail where we can be 100% sure that uh, if we design an interface in this way, if we design a procedure with these steps, uh, this would be, um, let's say, intuitive and easy to understand and easy to follow by our users. Okay. So we are still in the middle. We know what we want to do. We have some ideas on how to do it, or we are starting to think about some ideas. But uh, we don't want to risk uh, spending uh, weeks uh, of implementation time just to discover at the end uh, that something is wrong with the user. Maybe it's something as simple as the location of a link uh, or as a color convention that we used, uh, or maybe something much more complex like sequence of steps uh, where the user get them all wrong uh, compared to what we had in mind. Okay? So, Prototyping is one of the techniques uh, that will help us in trying to this in trying to support this ideation phase, where we are actually deciding what to build, and we we don't want to work in an open loop. Uh, I decide to be something and decide to create this interface, this form, uh, because I think it's the right way of doing that. Okay, remember that one of the goals of this course since the very beginning was to. Uh, I completely delete uh, the words I think uh, eh? or according to me or everybody will like it or so, or so on. So we need to be evidence driven. Hmm? So uh, we have an idea, of course, uh, of how to organize uh, the interface, how to structure the workflow, and how can we validate this idea before building the system to implement the functionality. So we cannot, we cannot just go to a user and tell them, okay, we have this idea, do you like it? It would be worthless, okay? Uh, you cannot tell or describe an interface and expect uh, a meaningful response. Uh, the only way could be to show them the interface, let them use it, let them try it, and then you will see, we will see whether they can find their way easily or whether they struggle with some details somewhere. But we want them to use the interface without really the system. So this is where prototyping and prototyping techniques in general come into play. Prototyping is a very broad word that contains uh, many different uh, techniques, uh, and some of which we are going to, uh, to learn, okay? So, just this is just a, a, a recap that we already have all this information from the project idea and from the need finding, okay? In our, in our say, 
progress throughout, through other course projects. And uh, right now we are at the stage when we want to create some ideas about the project. So we are starting to design now. We are starting to take all the knowledge we gathered during these weeks and put it into a positive way, into a creative, let's say, mood for generating one or more ideas about uh, uh, how the system would look, uh, would look like and would uh, behave. Uh, you see that uh, ideas is always in a plural form here. So this is a strong suggestion not to stop at the first idea you have. Uh, try to explore, okay, this is one possibility. How could I do it in a different way? And if we have more than one hypothesis, one, more than one path that you can be following, then it will be much more useful when we try to evaluate these alternatives with the users and you can get feedback about which one is better for them hmm? and not for us. So there are some functionalities that are simple enough that I would say there's only one, one, <laughs> uh, one meaningful way of doing them, one obvious way of, do, of implementing them. But some other functionalities, which are maybe the core of your project, uh, may mm, come into play in, in different ways. Mm -hmm. So try to keep, in this phase, we are still exploring, okay? Uh, explore different ideas, different possibilities, and then we try to test them. Mm -hmm. And for testing them, uh, we need some tools, some techniques uh, in order to test uh, an idea hmm? or an intermediate uh, development. And uh, again, the, according to, to the stage of the or development of the design, whether we are still in the early, say, broad ideas, broad strokes, or we are further on into trying to understand the, the uh, individual, maybe um, widgets into a form, so there will be a more detailed, more advanced uh, design step. The, the kind of tools that we use, uh, of course, will be different. Hmm? Um, okay, always remember this uh, error of uh, uh, putting too much attention of the details of the user interface. We, we must go there, of course. We must have an interface, uh, but never forget about the task that the user will be developing through that interface. So this is what matters to the user, the task. So don't uh, hide the goal of the task, uh, the development of the task under the details of the user interface. Mm -hmm. But keep it streamlined as much as possible. I always remember what we are, what we are doing. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, we, the idea here at this stage is try to explore different uh, design alternatives according to different sequences of actions. There may be alternative ways, uh, and then you choose one, or there may be alternative ways and you keep more than one, and different users will follow different ways uh, to get to the same result. It depends, no? in some cases, you want to give some flexibility so that the same result can be obtained in different ways. It may be that uh, uh, the task when I mean, when you are developing the task, when you, sorry, when you are execute, when the user is ex executing the task from their mobile device, the sequence of steps uh, should be different from the same task uh, if executed from from a personal computer, due to the screen size, the keyboard, and so on. So you are designing different alternatives to fit within the, the context or the device, for example, or the location. Hmm? Uh, so it. So let's keep ideas flowing, different uh, um, uh, alternatives, so that we can mix and match and select and filter out uh, the bad ones and keep uh, working on the good ones. And so we have a, a wider set of techniques. This is just a part of the list, uh, something that we are going to, to touch in this uh, couple of weeks, uh, of different ways uh, of helping us developing an intermediate version, a tangible version, a visible version of our ideas before going to real implementation, okay? So uh, this is a sentence that I found uh, uh, online. 
uh, basically it's telling us it don't waste too much time in explaining trying to do focus group meetings and so on to understand uh, what the users prefer or how what alternative is better just try to show them uh, an approximation of what would be the final system we are still always dealing with approximations because we don't want right now to spend to commit the big budget of real implementation hmm? and so what are some techniques some of these techniques uh, we will go uh, see different state different techniques that will be of course useful in different stages hmm? um, the easiest one is a sketch hmm? they call it sketch which shows uh, at a very it's a coarse level of, uh, of uh, precision. What happens with the with the system? So it may be a sketch, a very broad sketch of the user interface, just to give you a broad idea of what is there. A sketch of the of the modality of interaction. Okay, um, and it's something that you can maybe generate in five minutes if you have a good drawing hand. And this is also uh, already this one. I we don't know what it is. Okay, this picture down below here. But we know that we, 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 there will be some kiosk or whatever that you can operate by with your phone by putting the phone close to it, near to it, uh, and then something will happen in both streams. There will be probably some payment because I see a dollar sign here. Okay, so it already gives me some context, some information about the modality of interaction. You need to walk to there and use your phone to interact. Hmm. Do we like the interaction modality or not? Uh, do we prefer to have a touch screen there or? Okay, so without uh, a lot of information, without a lot of complexity or time, we can start having a feedback or explaining uh, to our users uh, how the system is, uh, let's say, we are planning to, to, to build the system in this way. Hmm. Uh, imagine trying to explain this without uh, any pictures. Okay, it, 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 the user would need, you'd need to explain it with words, uh, and the user would need to have build some picture like this in their mind and Probably, maybe the picture they make in their mind will not be correct or the same that we have. Hmm. So, a very, uh, let's say, quick drawing of a single screen or a part of the system or the shape of an object and so on. Hmm. Uh, usually, a sketch is a, a, just a static view. We don't know what happens before, what happened before, or what will happen right after this. It's a gesture of getting near to the to the kiosk, or what will happen? Okay, the that hand on the top right is touching a label called movies, and then we have a second sketch whose title is movies. So we can imagine that we have in different moments we are you know, there's a sequence of steps. We are capturing a first moment when the user selects movie, and the second moment where the user selects, uh, for example, Inception from the list of movies. So in some way, we have static pictures, but this static picture can be part of a longer story. Hmm? Uh, and in that case, we, we would call them uh, uh, storyboards, and we come in a, in a moment. Huh? These are some examples. Hmm? You see that uh, the constant here is uh, having something sketched, not finely drawn, something that you can do with paper and pen in black and white. Mm -hmm. But it suffices and, uh, and uh, uh, because it gives us a, a visible result in a very quick time. So if you, if you think, but I will be faster in drawing this in PowerPoint or another tool, you are tricking yourself. It's not true, okay? Uh, drawing it by hand is always faster, unless you have to 
go 27 of these uh, with similar element and changing only some little bit, then maybe it's better to automate. But there are better ways to automate it also with paper and pen. We use pencil and paper, not pen and paper, because we are trying to draw something. We have a first look at it. We don't like it. Yes, we just delete some part and redraw and move elements and so on. Until we are satisf satisfied. We are a group of people working on the interface. So we have something to discuss that we see. And there will be some decision that we take on these sketches that we hold on. So this will be the decision we take. And there can be some decisions that, that are harder to take. We cannot decide, say, which alternative is better. And so let's keep both of them. They make a copy and work on both copies, alternative one and two. And we keep them work, keep working on both of them uh, until the given moment, uh, maybe one, it becomes clear that one is better than the other, or we use both of them in, in user testing hmm, to, to check which one is better for the user, okay? So it's something that can help us very quickly explore, um, say, uh, communicate our ideas and explore um, their effect. And also explore different uh, possibilities. Hmm? Um, so these are this one no, easy, easy tool for the first, it's useful for a snapshot of the interface, for example. Uh, another techniques for, technique, uh, for um, early representation of an application is also uh, trying to f uh, visualize the connection between the different parts of the application. So while a sketch gives me some details about one single screen, a static view of one moment of the system. Uh, if I have many of these maps, or many of these sketches, how do they connect? So what are the connection, the, the hierarchy, and the, uh, the ordering of these elements? No? So this is where maps come into place. A map is a sort of a visual table of contents or visual index of the, all the functionalities and how they connect. This is a, picture from a very, very old uh, mobile phone, which is not, which was before the smartphone uh, era, when you have a, a, a menu that you have to navigate with only two buttons. And so uh, you can only go uh, forward or inside a menu and then go forward into the um, sub items. And the menu showed you all the options and each of these options would be, let's say we have a screen where you can set some some properties or, or do some actions and so on. So we have the, we don't know how each of these screens would look like, but we know or we plan how they are organized. No? Where, whether this organization makes sense to me, whether the functionality I want to find is located in the section that where I going to search it. So it will not be for example, this is a two-level menu, okay? Where an external level with uh, a, a ring of uh, how many then? Three, six, eight, nine, ten different items in the main menu, and each of these menu is a sub-menu. So you would not, you don't want, of course, to to see all the second-level items at once. Uh, you only want to enter in the sub-menu that you care about. Hmm? Uh, because you can only see one line at a time of this uh, menu uh, in, in, in that context. And so it's important that uh, the, uh, the function you are looking for is in the area that you are expecting. Hmm? Or the same is, can be done today with the, let's say, the site map. No? The map of the sections or of the pages of a website. Now we are starting from a um, home page and an index page, uh, and then for, from there we have a menu that one well, uh, first level navigation item. It's called the main menu of the website that can open different sections, or we may, we may have some search pages, some information pages that are disconnected from the main navigation, and so on. 
and so we can draw how uh, how the user can move uh, through the different parts we can reason about the structure we can reason about the labeling of each of the section of course each of these will have a different content with different appearance probably so we have let's say the, the two views one is the general structure of the architecture of our how, how we put together our information and the other is the visual part in the sketches um, these are basic tools that you usually uh, we will combine them into um, more complex prototypes another view of trying to give some dynamic behavior to, to the sketches is to building scenarios mm -hmm. building basically stories okay we saw the kiosk we saw the kiosk with the smartphone but what happens there what is that user doing what is the goal that the user is trying to reach and how does it reach it okay with us with the one static image uh, we cannot get all this information so uh, if our goal is to explore how the user interacts with the system this scenario building is uh, uh, quite uh, um, let's say um, effective uh, where we are basically trying to tell a story a story of, of the interaction uh, in scenarios usually we don't show the interface we show the user and we see how the user is doing this can be a textual scenario or can be a sketch a sequence of sketches mm, that tells a, a story in, the, in in time um, so one is just a story just a way of describing in an informal way a task instead of setting task one do it two three we, we tell the user uh, what they are expecting to do um, and uh, we can let's say uh, we have to, to keep the balance between a specific uh, example of what a user is doing and the general way of uh, solving the problem so the general specification with all the possible options and so on so it's a, a possible story in the, it's an abstract story it doesn't need to relate to a specific a, a real specific uh, case um, but uh, uh, it can it, we, it can tell us what are the sequence uh, uh, of, of choices that the user is going to do so we can do that without even referencing technology without even referencing uh, uh, user interfaces while on the other hand we can build a more concrete scenario uh, where we see more in detail the the key features of our design so we see the objects that we see maybe a sketch of the interface and so on uh, it all depends on the question we are asking okay these are just possibilities tools techniques that we may use uh, and we may customize them to the level of information that we are seeking okay so maybe in the first uh, stages we mo we want to focus more on the abstract scenarios where we are only describing the sequence of uh, information that the user is, is exchanging with the system and then we go to more concrete one where we see how uh, uh, that concept is being uh, let's say um, made real into a user interface and if you push forward uh, what you are getting to is a use case uh, like uh, in software engineering or a uh, uh, user story that will actually become a form of specification for your system uh, so you are adding more and more detail you're making more and more choices uh, from a general description of what the user is doing a, a story that tells what the user is doing down to by adding details and be more concrete uh, uh, down to the specification of the system features but one very strong uh, visually strong and very powerful 
way of describing scenarios are storyboards, okay? So where we are combining the visual power of sketches with the storytelling of uh, scenarios hmm? by creating sort of a comic book, okay? Uh, we are telling a, stories, a story by showing sketches of, uh, uh, say, key interaction moments. The definition of storyboard there reads, uh, it's a graphical depic depiction of the outward appearance of the internal system without any accompanying system functionality. So at this stage, uh, we don't care about uh, the details of the interface. Okay, so here we see a map, for example, so there will be some map findings, some location information, uh, but mostly we are focused uh, on what the user is doing so it's walking in this case, uh, selecting something from a list uh, or whatever. So this is just a set of pictures that doesn't tell a story yet. Hmm? We'll see more, um, more useful examples in a, in a couple of screens. Uh, but the idea is just like, okay, like you are reading a comic book. There are many uh, uh, images hmm, that are, should be read in sequence and where you see what the user is doing, what your hero is doing, okay? The, the subject of the story is always the user. Hmm? So uh, it's not the, a detail of possible user interfaces, but of possible, but uh, we want to detail the possible usage of the user interface. Hmm? Uh, because we, we must understand uh, uh, what kind of uh, information is exchanged from the user uh, to the system and vice versa. Don't uh, be worried about uh, drawing skills uh, or graphical skills. Uh, this is not the point. Uh, the point is uh, giving an idea or having a powerful visual way of telling a story and to understand and to say gather feedback, elicit feedback from the users who are, uh, to whom we are presenting this story. Um, so we describe a task in a very easy way, easy to understand, easy to represent. We, a, story, a good storyboard should describe how a user reaches a goal, which is the definition of the task, but in a visual way through a, second, a set of sketches. And how people will, uh, will, would, uh, would see themselves in fulfilling that task. And so we see people in, uh, interacting with the system, interacting with each other. In some cases, we may focus on some key point of interaction, but mostly with, with the device, with interface, but mostly uh, the focus is on, on, on the people. And we see that at the end of the story, the user has reached their goal. So we should start with the first panel, let's say in your comic, uh, where the user has a trouble, is an issue, and the last panel where this issue has been resolved. And in between, the story will tell us how this is done, okay? So it's a good representation of tasks. This is an example. We see that the graphical quality is not excellent, but it's better. We will see, we will discuss it also when we are, well, uh, we come to this point again when we discuss uh, paper prototypes, but uh, uh, always try not to be perfect in your drawings. Because in the mind of, of the, your users, perfect uh, means uh, final, okay? Means you cannot change it anymore. If I see something which is still approximate, it communicates the idea that it's still a work in progress. So if I have a comment or you have a question or I don't understand something, I feel more free to comment because I see that it's a, it's a work in progress, so it's not a big deal if, we, if you need to change something. 
if you need to revise some idea. If I had this, say, drawn by a, a professional illustrator in colors and so on, you would read it, uh, but it would be very difficult for you as a user to give them negative comments, uh, comments or find issues about this work. Because you feel that I invested so much time and it, for me it's so well polished that uh, I'm sure this is the final form. Okay, so it's not just about being quick. This is an important point, being quick, not, not losing. We are trying to uh, not lose time into implementation, but, by, but we, don't want, we don't want to spend uh, one month uh, in creating storyboards. Okay, so it's important to have a, 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 a tool that is, that is quick to use for us but also that tells the user the right message. We are still in the early stages of design. So everything can be changed, okay? Um, so for example, this is a story of a user, what a busy day, I better go home now. There is some technology around the user. We have a computer on the desk, we have a smartphone in the hand, and so on. But we don't see the details of the technology. Uh, well, in, in, the, in the metro, you cannot have a um, um, cell signal, uh, and so it loses some time. When it finally is out of, of, the, of the metro, the signal comes back, and uh, uh, probably some application su is suggesting the user what to have for dinner. Hmm? So it's very late and uh, he needs some help, he gets some help in deciding what recipe to prepare tonight, what to eat. And uh, the application only, uh, not only tells me what uh, to prepare, but in the four, fourth panel it will tell me also what I need to buy, no? what are the ingredients, uh, and later on the instructions. And finally, I can eat. Hmm? So, uh, from a context where I need to run home to a context when I finally sit down and eat dinner through a set of steps uh, that we understand this application is helping the user in uh, deciding a recipe, in uh, um, shopping for what is needed, uh, and in preparing the meal. There is not a single, say, pixel of this uh, user interface. We don't know what it is. Just, you know, a sketch that tells us that it will be on our mobile phone and it tells us that, of course, it needs uh, a network connection to, to be working. So in some context, it will not work. Hmm. So these are some key information. It's a mobile application, it needs a network connection, and the, at least uh, it will help me, it will guide me through at least three steps uh, uh, choosing the recipe, um, shopping, and uh, and preparing the meal. Then we may also have a second uh, uh, storyboard, maybe for ab about for focusing on the meal preparation, if we want to show the user what we have in mind about this phase and so on. Okay. So um, by seeing what the user is, what the user is doing. We are very much focused on the goal of the user, but we can gather a lot of requirements uh, from the application. The requirement that, okay, remember, we draw, we drew this, okay? So um, we have some requirements in mind that we can, tr we, we will, we are trying to put those requirements into a context that other users may understand better. So instead of telling them a the list of requirements, we are showing how these requirements come into play in a realistic scenario. Um, and of course, it's much easier to see this picture than to read the, that sentence up there. It basically, it's telling the same thing. Maybe less, there's less information. To give the same information in text form, you would probably would need a couple of pages of text that nobody's going to read. Um, this is another example by, by the same website, uh, like some uh, author, uh, where the context is different, okay? 8 p.m., oh, I didn't make any shopping today. 
So the context is different, the user is, is at home, and it's later. In the previous storyboard, it was six o'clock, now it's eight, okay? Uh, the pizza is taking 45 minutes to deliver. So we see that the user initially was, uh, say, desperate, and say, okay, it's, it's too late, I need to order something out. But the shipping times are too long for, for them, and so plan B, let's, let's check what we have in the fridge, okay? And uh, I've still got some veggies and uh, feta, let's see what I can make, so by choosing the ingredients that I have, uh, maybe I can find a, a kind of salad that only takes 15 minutes to prepare. So that, at that point, 15 minutes is less than the time I would need to wait for getting the pizza, and, uh, and so again, uh, uh, we have uh, the instruction for building that, and uh, say that at, at 8.30, uh, is able to, to consume their meal. Hmm? It's another variant huh, uh, of, uh, of the same project, maybe, or a different project. For sure, it will cover some similar needs, uh, for example, instruction in the preparation, but also some different needs. In one case, is uh, it includes shopping, and so it has a broader choice of, uh, of recipes. In the other case, it's, uh, it, un it has to work uh, with the current uh, ingredients. There are two separate user needs. Uh, and depends on whether our application wants to cover both of them or maybe focus on, on one of them only. And so we can explore this. There are different stories where we can reason about which, uh, okay, but maybe uh, one user will be telling us, okay, but mm, I don't know because uh, I have a, maybe a shop really close, I can go down, so if I'm, if I'm missing something from the fr fridge, it's not a big deal, for example. Or, or maybe some user at this stage will comment, uh, yes, but they would like also to, to check the, uh, okay, try to give priority to the ingredients that are, uh, have, a, have a closest expiration date. Hmm. And so maybe some new information huh, can, be, can be integrated into, into the application, into the system. So by exploring the way in which, uh, so we, are, we, we see that we, we switched the modality. First, in the observation, we just try to get uh, information about how the user is operating. And now we are proposing a different way of, of operation, of behavior, and asking them whether it would fit huh, within their, their needs. Hmm? Um, so, what is the goal of uh, creating a, a storyboard? First of all, uh, declaring the setting in which the scene is going to develop. So, who are the people? What is the environment? Uh, we see there are just a, a couple of, uh, of lines that will tell us we are in the office, we are at home, and, uh, and what are we, what do we want to accomplish? What is our goal? Usually in the first panel, we can give all of this, or, or in the first couple of panels. So the context in which uh, this is happening, and the, the people, the actors uh, that are involved. And then we describe a sequence of steps. One possible sequence among the all possibilities, we choose one development. Okay, so it's not a complete, uh, Task analysis is one, the, the development of one possible alternative. In these steps, uh, we don't need to show, it's better not to show a detailed user interface because we don't want the user to focus on those details. Maybe we still haven't worked out. We are still working on the sequence of activities and we, don't, we didn't decide yet how to show some information. So it's better not to show a detail that is not important for us at, the, at this stage. Basically, it's not important for the user to understand what is happening. We, we, we could understand everything without seeing what's on the screen. 
we saw that the device was involved, that was important, but the details of, of what appeared on the device uh, or what kind of query or what kind of data we entered was not shown, okay? Uh, because we are focusing on the task and not the, on the interface. Hmm? The storyboards are pow very powerful for this. Hmm? Um, so, what are the steps and what is the role of the user interface or the device in these steps? Uh, in some steps, uh, for example, here, he was calling, so it's, he was using the phone, but he was not using my application. So in this case, in the second panel, in the first and the second panel, the application does nothing, is not involved. Uh, later, I know also in the last one, of course, okay? But in some of them, we see that there should be an interaction between the user and the, the system and the, and the design. And also, it's important to show, okay, why the user decided to use the, the functionality. So the trigger, the, the, the starting step. Okay, I have a goal, okay, but there's something that pushes me to execute this goal or to, say, to execute the tasks that, that will lead to the fulfillment of the goal right now. We always have many goals in mind, okay? We have a lot of lists to do, a long list of things to do or that we like to, to do in the, the future. So many, we have in, in every moment in our life, we have many goals in mind. But in a given moment, uh, we choose to do one. And why we choose the first instead of the second, uh, most of the, maybe different reasons, but in many cases also the context plays a role. So at home at eight o'clock, uh, then among all the possible goals of, uh, I don't know, learning Chinese or making dinner, maybe the second one in that context uh, uh, would be more important. So the user is driven to find the solution to that. Okay? Um, again, we are trying to trick the user into telling us uh, whether they really need or and when they really need that functionality. If I tell you a new application, if I show a new application, new solution, say, okay, do you like it? Yes. Do you find it useful? Yes. When would you use it? When are the, the time where you are actually pulling your phone out of your pocket to open that application? Instead of doing something else. Okay? So that is the, the, uh, another, let's say, information we can gather from this uh, storyboard. Whether it's credible that at that point the user is following that step, that task. And finally, the, uh, everything uh, should lead to the satisfaction of the user goal. So at the end of the story, we should see that the user is in you know, some way happy for reaching the goal. So it took some work for them. In, the user needed to go to some, through some steps, uh, through some interactions, and to do some physical things, but at the end, they reach the goal. Okay? So it's a different way. Instead of setting the goal uh, in words, uh, trying to describe the motivation, you just show at the end the user uh, that, let's say, um, Visibly, uh, uh, you can feel that they reached what they wanted to do. So we are setting the beginning and the end of the task. Uh, remember task analysis. We start at point one until point six. After point six, the user will do something else, which will not be related to this. It will be another task because this one is completed. So it's always important to uh, see where this hands. Uh, a storyboard uh, is a story, okay, like the name says. So it's a sequence of, uh, uh, of images that we can read quite easily and we can give a, a dynamic behavior to this because we are used to read comics, comic books, for example. 
So we know how to read them, how to make a move in our mind by just by seeing these, uh, these few moments uh, in the panel. So we are exploiting the knowledge of the user about how to read a comic book. So we can uh, use the, uh, these are, for example, our thought of the users. The user is, is thinking these words, okay? Uh, in many cases, would, would in, or if the, the, the drawing were more precise, we would put this into a, a cloud bubble, okay? Or uh, in a dashed uh, um, call out uh, uh, message. Uh, in, uh, in comic books, we have conventions to, to describe uh, uh, when the user is speaking, they have a speech bubble. When the user is thinking, this speech bubble is dashed or cloudy. When the user is yelling, so we use a bold face and maybe a spiky uh, bubble, and so on. So we can reuse these conventions here. If uh, we have some, let's say, external commenters, uh, sort of, of a narrator that is telling things, uh, usually their message is enclosed in a rectangle, in a corner. And so it went happy, so it was. Okay, we have comments. So we can exploit this convention because we know that our, all our users uh, will already know them. So instead of explaining, we just use these conventions that to, get, to give more information through. Um, in some, case, in some cases, you can go fancier. So we have a storyboard uh, uh, where maybe some panels or some elements uh, are animated. For example, you may have a video playing in one of these. Uh, of course, if you cannot print them on paper, you will need to show them on screen. But maybe some of the panels will have some an animations in them. Uh, if you want, to. if you need, if it is not for being fancier, it's because maybe that functionality, that dynamic behavior is important for understanding. Hmm? But usually it is not. Uh, you may also have uh, textual uh, storyboards. Uh, I would be against a, a full textual storyboard because it's very heavy to read. But maybe there are some steps uh, where the user is actually doing nothing. Okay. So uh, what about a maybe very complex search engine when you enter some criteria and then at the end, uh, you get some results, but these results come maybe after a while, okay, after 15 minutes. Do you draw a user that for 15 minutes is just sitting and waiting? Or maybe, yes, yes, you, can, you could do that. Or you can just draw a panel and just with the text. Uh, meanwhile, the system is working and thinking. And then you go straight to the result. So there may be some steps, some passages that don't really involve the user or are complex to explain. And at that point, we can use some text to explain that step instead of showing it. If there is nothing to show, we can just explain what is happening. Mm -hmm. So it's more abstract. The user needs, uh, <laughs> say, um, a little additional effort to visualize the step. But instead of, of drawing something which is insignificant, we can use uh, more text uh, uh, than, than in a normal pen. So this is why we, we decide to draw these storyboards by hand. It's quick, and quick means not expensive. We just uh, remember that the most, uh, the, the biggest cost in building any system is always the, the manpower, and the time. And uh, also, if you have a, a thick pen, in a small piece of paper, you are forced uh, to omit a lot of details. Even if you want, even if in your mind you already have the details of this interface, it just doesn't fit. You cannot draw it. It's impossible, okay, physically. And so it f helps you to focus on the task instead of, the, of, of uh, spending time or, or, or over committing to the details. So it's also a tool for us, for filtering our, our mind, our thought. Uh, since it's quicker, we can experiment different scenarios like we did before with the dinner. I don't know whether it's more useful for 
a user that will buy something on the way home or uh, take it in the fridge. Okay, let's, let's explore the two and see what happens. Hmm? See the reactions of, uh, of some group of users. Uh, it's imprecise, uh, already uh, mentioned, uh, we already discussed this point. Uh, since it's imprecise, the users will feel free to give comments, even negative comments, uh, because, okay, they, they don't have the impression that the, the, the work is, uh, is final. They also, the comment of the user, need to focus on the content of the story and not of, on the detail on the, of the interface because they are not seeing the interface. So they will comment about what they would think in that moment, what they would do instead in a, in a given step. Nobody will comment uh, about, okay, but this icon is too large because <laughs> it's not shown, okay? There's no distraction by graphical elements in a storyboard. They will come later, of course, we will need to get to that. But I, will, I want to, say, design the details of the interface only once I'm sure that the overall task is useful and was, is well designed. Otherwise, I will be wasting time in designing the details of something that turns out to be useless or not the right way of doing that. Here are some, uh, some suggestions about uh, the drawing style. You see that some examples of how, since the, let's say, the main focus is drawing people, you don't need to be Michelangelo to, to draw perfect people with all the anatomic details. Uh, we are just sketching, not drawing people. Okay, so we, there are different styles, let's say, graphical styles that you can choose depending on, on your hand. Uh, you know, you, you just need uh, three or four lines uh, to give the impression of a person doing something. We are exploiting that our brains uh, are very powerful at recognizing people and situation. And so uh, we need very few details uh, for making up a person. Uh, th these people don't have eyes and nose and mouth, but they don't care us, okay? It's not a problem. We know that there are people, this is the head, this is the body, and so on. Okay? Just remember when we see maybe some, uh, some cloud or some dirt into the floor, we say, oh, I recognize a face there. We see eyes, we see faces, because our mind is constantly trying to decode uh, people. Okay? So we need a really a few graphical signs. We don't need to spend uh, a lot of time. And also, we have very little modifications. So this probably you, you take the star people. Star people means okay. You see that they are there's a head with four spikes. And if you just change the position of the spikes, you can feel uh, so the dynamic behavior behavior of the person. So it doesn't need a lot of uh, drawing skills. Okay, or a lot of details even there. We don't know how, how these people are dressed. We don't know whether they are male or female. Because maybe we don't care. If we cared about those details, I, we would probably draw them. Maybe we put a hat, we put a, a jacket or whatever, if it is important for our purpose. So do you remember how the people in our previous storyboard were dressed? No, we didn't care. I don't know either. either. We can go back and check, but uh, it was not important for the task at hand. The task was building, making dinner. So were there? No, they were, they, they had no details about that. I don't know whether you imagined a male or a female in this setting. I don't know. It's totally neutral. It's not important in this context. So everybody will imagine or make their own assumption, but okay, it's okay because uh, the main focus is on the actions here and not on the uh, on the uh, on dresses or other other details. Okay, so uh, we really are essential in our sketch, sketching, trying to 
give only the information that is, um, is important, focusing the story on, on the task that we are trying to develop. Hmm? So it's an exercise in focusing. The less detail, the minimum amount of details that we need to uh, stress the point uh, of the development of, of, the, of the application. If we add more details, we are you know, distracting the user because we are maybe uh, sort of telling the user that something is important. If there are so few details, maybe five or details uh, in, in every panel, each of them has to count. If you put it some, uh, for example, in, the one, in one of the panels that we had a clock, a wall clock. That was important. It was not a, a furniture detail. Uh, it was important because it helped the setting of, co of locating that story in a place, in a time, hmm? and so on. Um, okay, the next, so in, in the, with these tools, sketches and, uh, and storyboards, we are able to explore the task in general. Uh, so we are able to make some choices, okay? Maybe, as we said at the beginning, uh, there is some goal that can be reached in different ways so we can decide uh, or draw different possibility different tasks different sequence of actions and then we check uh, uh, which ones are, are received better by the user hmm? okay the next step so we we try to fix uh, on a set of, of tasks that we are going to implement uh, that are described by the storyboard uh, again sorry we are uh, always low on budget lower on time Okay, so we don't need to make a storyboard for each and every functionality of the system. Only for the ones that, for those functionalities that we want feedback from, on. Feedback from ourselves. So by developing the story, we are, are forced to focus on the important step. We are able to make them explicit. Uh, and maybe after drawing them, we, we understand it better. Or, of course, finding feedback from some potential users. They will see the story and comment uh, what is good for them, what was bad, uh, and so on. Would they fit into that uh, scenario? What is missing? What is useless? And so on. But once we fix this, so we decided how to develop the different scenarios, we should go one step further towards the actual one step further to closer to the to the implementation okay and this is where the broad category of prototypes uh, is actually uh, considered a storyboard is not yet a prototype you know, because it's still uh, telling a story about the user a prototype with the definition is a concrete by but partial representation or implementation of a system design so this is the first time in these slides that we are talking about the system. We are describing some properties of the system and not some properties of the user, properties or behaviors of the user. Okay? We came, we came here because we know the goal is interesting, because we know the development of the task fits with the user perception. And so we need to design actually the, the system. Hmm? Um, concrete but partial. So concrete means not abstract, means not vaporware, but something that you can look at. Partial because we are not, we don't have the final implementation yet. Hmm? It should be easily modified and extensible of a plant software system, okay? And where the focus most likely is on the interface and the interaction, input and output of the, um, of the interface. Easily modified, because we are still exploring alternatives. We are still exploring details. We are still, say, working by trial and error. We design something, we try to use it, and we see with that something creates uh, errors or is, is not easy to understand. It creates ambiguities, so we will modify it and try again with the modified version. 
okay so again we still need to have something which is quick to create uh, and the goal is not to have the final validation but basically helping us in exploration in a visual way in an interactive way in a practical way with with the communication with the collaboration between the, the design team and the test users and uh, with a prototype even if it's incomplete uh, the user has some sort of a feeling of using the real system hmm? we are in many many cases we saw even with a static picture of, of the of the website uh, since we have a lot of experience of, of what of how a website um, behaves if we interact with just a printed version we can feel like interacting with a real thing so the user's mind feels to get quite easily there are many types of prototypes uh, depending on the fidelity of the prototype so the definition say that the, uh, it was a, a partial representation of the system so how partial how are we close to the final version here the final pro product is a prototype of its, is a perfect prototype of itself huh? or we may have something very very broad like a storyboard that gives you some partial representation of a system but it's so partial that in many cases we don't even see the interface in between we have different levels of, uh, of fidelity starting from paper prototypes which are probably the most important tool um, which is a sort of a storyboard but which is focused or sketch which is focused on the interface instead of the user okay uh, or a digital mockup so a sort of a prototype which is show that is let's say drawn with computer tools instead of paper and pencil and so they may have some little interactivity uh, or some real interactive prototype where you are you are actually using a website which simulates a real behavior maybe we don't have a real backend maybe we don't have uh, all the functionalities implemented but you are starting to click somewhere to get a feedback and then of course we have the final implementation each of the, these step uh, this issue of these tools have a different of course uh, level uh, degree of realism and uh, of course they require a different time for implementation okay so we move to the next step when we are sure that the time investment the investment uh, is worthwhile uh, and of course uh, at each level according to the level of realism we can get feedback and we can explore different uh, stages of our design so storyboards are all about user tasks there's nothing about the interface in storyboard but we can analyze the development of tasks when the task is fixed uh, we can start uh, thinking about the interaction of the user with the interface because right now we are showing the interface and uh, but this will be still very sketchy if we want to draw it better then we can start thinking about the visual design the space the alignment uh, the position of the element in the page that can only be discussed when we have a, a more precise drawing not something hand sketched and so on if there is a prototype is interactive then we can let the user test a workflow and see whether they, fa they fail, whether they do some slips or mistakes, uh, the, their efficiency, and so we can actually gather some details about the actual quantitative usability of the system. So as we pro progress further, we can refine step by step different aspects of, the, of, the, of our design. Mm -hmm. At every step, we get information, and we put all the information together into the final product that, of course, we will need to build. But when we build it, we are probably more likely to build the right thing and not to have to, to change it one week after launch because some users are not able to use our key functionality. Um, and of course, uh, at every step, uh, we can, or we should involve the users uh, getting feedback and not being uh, afraid of changing something back. So if we discover something, Maybe we can we should go back to the interface prototype and 
optimize it or change it or improve it. Mm. Uh, the key assumption is all the, that all the steps before the final product uh, don't cost much. Okay? Cost only a few days compared to the several weeks uh, of the final product. So we can spend time here. We are not wasting, uh, say, project resources for the main implementation. And uh, about prototypes, okay, these are some examples of uh, some of the prototypes we are going to show. Um, we will go one by one onto this. And uh, as I said, prototype is a, is a broad concept. Uh, and there may be, I say, this is not a, a closed list of uh, all the possible prototypes you can, you can build. It's an open list and uh, you can invent a new way of doing prototyping. The important part is uh, being clear or clarifying yourself uh, what is the purpose of the prototype you are building. So what are the questions I'm asking right now? What part uh, of the system does it cover? How much fidelity do I need in the representation of the interface? And uh, uh, do I need uh, this prototype to survive and to evolve, or can, it throw, can I throw it away? So for example, if I have a paper sketch, I use it during the testing, I, we, I find the information that I need, I throw it away. If I'm building an interactive prototype, that will, I will spend some days of implementation, maybe because we, there are already web pages, maybe part of these web pages will be included in the final product. So it will not be, I will be investing more, but it's not throw away. It's something that can become, can evolve into the final system. So that depends on the implementation. So we are where some, I, I won't give, enter into the details of this, uh, let's say, classification, categorization. These are just some examples of what we can do. But let's focus more on the concept. We don't need to, it's not a f an official classification, so just for helping us. The purpose for a prototype uh, is uh, maybe, okay, some examples are, I build a prototype uh, for expert analysis. What does it mean? Uh, I show it uh, to another designer. Or inside the design group, uh, we are different people, and we will draw, a pro uh, create a prototype and uh, analyze it between, among the designers, so without involving users. We should always do that. Before involving users, we should first have a check ourselves. Are we with somebody which is also expert in, in um, usability and will tell us some uh, feedback, some improvements uh, that we can integrate before going to the users. Of course, uh, we can uh, use those with users. In the wild, so let's go out and check, like we did with the interviews, we are planning to go there and uh, sort of interview focused on the storyboard. Or maybe in a more controlled experiment, uh, where we bring people, we give a, a proper setting, uh, we time their experience, we help them. We see some, some, uh, some instruction for doing that, because that would be also one, one of the tasks uh, to do in the lab. Or uh, maybe we just, we can also uh, check the storyboard with respect to some design rules or design guidelines. We will learn some rules, some guidelines to evaluate uh, the quality of uh, the usability, you know, the quality from the point of view of usability or user interface. We will learn some rules. So we can check these rules, whether these apply to, for example, one rule is uh, always have some help information about the different items. So it's easy to check whether a prototype has some location or some hints uh, where the, this help uh, can be found, okay? So we can check it with the experience of uh, current designers and the experience of sets of rules uh, that we want to check. Before opening a text editor for an HTML file. 
um, as I said, the prototype can be just a throwaway one. So we make a picture, we make our testing, and okay, it did their purpose. We put it aside and we go on with the project. Or we may have some incremental prototyping. So the prototypes are becoming more and more uh, reliable, more and more uh, precise, and they are quickly evolving into the final system. Okay, if you start with a visual prototyping tool, in this case you need, you need tools, of course, for doing that, uh, computer tools. Uh, you start with, with a visual exploration tool, and then these two will generate, uh, for example, the HTML and CSS for you. And uh, we can, you can add some local interactivity, and from that you will have the user interface elements uh, to, to really program and to connect all the event handlers uh, uh, in the final implementation. So it's something that starts uh, with some, say, uh, visual aspects, and then it will, uh, it will add uh, gradually different uh, um, behaviors. Some of them will be in, in the development tool, in the prototyping tool, and the same files will then transit into the development tool. Okay. Um, uh, in some other cases, uh, you also have like, uh, no, in agile programming, you start with a real implementation that does nothing, basically. And you start adding functionality to what will become the real product. So your prototype is actually version zero of your product. Uh, this much, is much more expensive because also for, for doing quick checks, uh, you would have to implement something running and it always takes time. Hmm. So, um, okay, <laughs> this is an example of what we mean by low fidelity prototype. Uh, this is the same window in the prototype and in the real implementation. Um, just try to think about. Uh, how much time you need to draw the picture on the right on the left, and how, how much time do you need to implement uh, this dialogue window on the right? You go from five minutes to five hours, probably. Okay, that's the whole point. And uh, the other point is here, of course, uh, the user is never will never focus on the spacing, the alignment, the pixels the choice of fonts, because there are none of this, okay? The only thing that the user may focus is on the understanding, okay, this is, of course, these are tabs. The labeling of these tabs, can I understand what is going on? Can I understand what are these numbers and so on? So we focus on the content here, not on the graphical layout. On purpose. Uh, it's very likely that the same sketch would also be valid uh, in Windows 10 or Windows 11, while this dialog was taken probably from Windows XP. And uh, because the layout convention changed a lot, but the overall contents are still the same. So we are validating the contents and the organization. Okay, so the first and most important uh, type of prototype uh, are these uh, paper prototypes uh, that the name tells you nearly everything. everything. So uh, a simplified version of our application on paper. Um, what do we do? We try to draw uh, sketches of some static uh, versions of the interface on paper, and uh, I, I will show some some examples. Uh, then, of course, uh, we continue next week. Uh, these are, uh, for example, some uh, in examples of interfaces that are assumed to be a mobile application. So, what they did is to create a sort of a frame for a smartphone. So, you see this black frame here with cardboard, nothing more, okay? With a hole in the middle. 
and uh, behind this fake phone you just slide some paper strips so you can have the impression of being a phone with some elements on it on the interface you can you know, slide up and actually you would shift the paper strip to expose different content on the page you can slide up and left if the left and right if the the paper was uh, larger and you can show on this phone different interfaces according to the different uh, functionalities of your application hmm? uh, the three on the right are more precise because they are printed okay the two on the left uh, are less uh, uh, with a lower fidelity because they are hand drawn uh, it seems like uh, you know a toy but uh, uh, if, if you try to use this it, it's very strange because you really got to get a feeling of nearly using the real application it's just a piece of paper but with the right context and it, with a task in mind you can find, you can, uh, you know where you, where you would look, look for some information. You, you click on it, uh, and then of course the paper doesn't move, uh, but you can move it, or somebody can help you moving it. it uh, and um, and this is very effective. Huh? Uh, we just sketch uh, the screen appearance in some static moment. We should, uh, we can use some extra paper pieces to show the context so for example the smartphone frame the window browser frame and so on where to put uh, where to show the information and uh, interacting with paper is quite natural okay you can just tap or click with your finger it's when you're explaining something to your friend uh, for example on a computer screen you would say with your finger click here okay so we already do that so we just do it on a piece of paper where the interface is just drawn instead of instead of displayed it's the same okay um, if there is a text box where you can write you can just take your pen and write or interacting actually with the, with the, with the paper or you just pretend okay here I would write my name and you don't really but you put your finger there and say, okay, what I would write there. Okay, we are good at pretending. And if the, oh, the, the interactivity of the, of the interface, of course, uh, the paper is not interactive at all, but we may simulate its behavior. So basically you have a paper interface. I click in a button that is, should open a new window and so I have uh, another person that uh, uh, already has the new window in paper ready and it puts it in front of me. So from my point of view, that person is, uh, say, part of the background. It simulates the computer. And so I click the button and a new window appeared in front of me. So a good technique for experimenting with paper prototype is having a user in front of the prototype. The user is talking to a designer that does the interview, does the questions, does all the conversation. And we have another person which is just a helper, the simulator of the computer that will manage the pieces of papers that simulate the reaction of the, of the system or the interface. So this second paper doesn't talk, doesn't interact with the user because it's part of the system. It has to be perceived as part of the system. So I have a real human person I've been talking to while I'm playing with the interface. And I have this interface, which is partly paper, partly human, but I don't care about the human part in this, in this moment. Okay? So really, you need two persons and, and, and uh, a, pen, a pencil and, uh, and a piece of paper. You don't need any, any more fancy equipment huh, to, do, to start using testing. Um, in some cases, this uh, simulator this operator uh, can also help the user understanding maybe if you have an animation or if you have a sound at a given point uh, of course you cannot do show that uh, in paper so that pa that person would probably explain what is happening at a given moment huh? but uh, uh, 
So we have a low fidelity, very low fidelity, in the look and feel of the application. There is no precise layout, no fonts, no colors, no icons, no branding, but a high fidelity in depth of the interaction because all the significant actions are there. All the interaction is shown because we have this dynamic behavior thanks to the helper person. And, uh, and overall, they just cost, uh, uh, say, drawing something on, on paper. So I will stop here, uh, because so we have the five minutes to walk uh, to the lab. Uh, on next week, I will try to show you some, ex some examples uh, of how people did uh, create some paper prototypes so to just to give you inspiration of what actually can be done. Uh, they told me that uh, you can enter Labin from the ground floor here on this side. So you don't need to go, to go on the other side of the, of the you know, uh, just uh, besides the study room with the microwaves, uh, there's the door there wh where you entered before, okay? And go up to the first floor. Keep, keep in mind that all the other doors are closed, so you can only do floors zero and one, okay? Okay, see you there.